Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of X4 and today we're going to be talking about the control of the ship and some of the things that are on its hood that are obviously relevant to what we want to do. Now we are back sat in our station so the first thing we're going to do is if you're not already sat in it obviously you need to uh, go ahead and sit in it. Uh, so now a couple of things to point before I set off um, if you press the options button here it gives you all the options of the pause menu however as you can see the sound in the background is still going which means that we are not paused however if you press the escape key you are now paused useful to note that sometimes because obviously if you want to do some stuff um, if you do that it's going to pause the whole game whereas if you think it's paused when you're using this it's not and you can be still attacked Okay, right, let's undock, which as you can see, it gives you the um, the actual shortcut keys. We'll go ahead and undock. Alright, now, as standard, you can't actually do anything, as you can see, it's not moving. I can go side to side, which is obviously my A and D keys. W and S is not forward and backward in this, it is up and down. Q rotates and E rotates. Now, because we've got um, flight assist on, now this is steering mode, a little different to flight assist which we'll come to and as you can see it'll tell you how to deactivate it as well but if I want to be able to rotate around it's going to flip me back over stop that, flight assist disable which is the control space bar key that's the only one that tells you like which one isn't and as you can see it no longer stops me from crashing into stuff let me just pass through the station then just double check yeah we're still inside the station something may have bumped into us okay so flight assist is useful sometimes because in this mode you can flip around upside down if you want to say attack a ship's underside and um, you can obviously rotate and if you've got flight assist on it'll just flip you back again so you're constantly fighting with the forces to try and keep it you can do that if you find it easier Sometimes it's easier just having the flight assist off. Now, as you've obviously seen already, shift and spacebar gives you theory mode. Now, there's a couple of slight differences to what I do. Now, a lot of people talk about the spacebar being the brake button. That's actually my fire button. Now, whilst you're inside a station, you don't want to be hitting the station because you'll piss them off. Uh, so what I tend to do is press the number two key. As you can see now, it says no weapons group is activated, basically. It tells you the to cycle through the uh, the uh, primary weapons is obviously one, two, three, and four. And you can see there on the right hand side, them little buttons, the little dots. Let me just take steering off. These here, these uh, are assigned to your weapon groups. When that's lit up, it means your weapons are charged, and we're actually hitting the station there. So let's just there you go, and you can see it's got a charge and I don't think this weapon system will actually bring it's not that powerful okay so you'll notice a couple of things you'll notice the um, the little dot in the center now is tracking where I'm pointing my mouse if you press the space bar it will go directly forward as pressing space bar is directional fire firing straight forward if you're using a mouse the middle mouse button tends to be where you can aim if you want something where you know you want to edge that target but you don't want to move the uh, the ship and you're in good firing range especially something like a bomber or something like that then it's good to note that now if you are using a joystick before we continue I would strongly advise you head on over to your settings your options head on over to these here and if you go to your controls and general it will give you most of your flight now the little yellow icon is if you're using a joystick Okay, because we're using a mouse with the green icon here, is direct mouse steering, which is what we've been doing. Obviously, that's once you've activated it. Familiarize yourself before you set off, generally before you've even undocked, with your controls. Maybe have something where you've written down the useful stuff because there's things in here that you wouldn't necessarily realize. I use mouse wheel to um, increase and decrease my throttle. You can increase and decrease your acceleration by the X and Z keys. Pull reverse. It's your key number five on the joystick. So we don't have that option. So if we press the decelerate button enough, it'll start reversing us. Match target speed, which is very useful, is shift and X. 
Stop engines, which is also useful, is my backspace, and my boost is my tab. Boost, very useful. Everything else is pretty much as I've discussed. The direct mass steering is... It's... But let's go ahead and use it. So shift and N is direct mouse steer. As you can see now, it will respond exactly to my mouse. Whereas this here, as you can see, it's a little smoother. So it, if you're if you're wanting a tight turn, you take it all the way off the screen. Whereas if you want a softer turn, you're obviously using it slower down. So the difference between is is this will literally respond to my mouse. Uh, which can sometimes be a little disorientating so let's go ahead and put my steering mode on and it's still tracking with my weapon systems now if i press the f2 does it show you uh yeah it does you can just about see him there you see it there at the front it's only the one cannon you can see it's rotating around but it is actually tracking which is kind of cool uh, to stop the tracking you obviously just hit the space bar once and it'll go back to the middle Okay, so as I said, um, let's have a let me just rotate it so we can see it a little. This here is your primary, this here is your secondary. Our secondary is five, six, seven, and eight. As you can see, they're rotating around, and the F key is usually your secondary weapon. We don't have a uh, secondary, and just to show you that I am not making it up, go to our game note, we want game settings, we want controls, general. Fire primary weapons is obviously the space bar that we've talked about. Oh, it's the L key, so I am making it up. I um, used to have it on the F key. No weapons assigned to the active group. It's like the primary active weapon group with one, two, three, and four. So we've got no secondaries. Okay, so get that off there. You press the enter key again. We have got our chip interaction, just the same as we have with the dock interaction, but a little bit different. So. Primary weaponry, secondary weaponry. All your weapon groups will be assigned here. If you want to set, uh, set up, so if you want like a single turret, set to primary weapon one, and you've got two cannons on there, or two pulse lasers. Um, if you've got a second one, you want group number two to have both activated, then you'd obviously select that, and you select the second one for that. We've only got the one, so it's pointless doing anything else. We've got no secondaries at all. Secondaries are usually your gunfire missiles, tracking missiles, stuff like that. Um, if you've got weapons that have multiple munitions, like... Uh, missile launchers and you've got like say gunfire missile and tracking missiles on board press the K button that'll switch between your ammunition okay so you can deploy your still civilian stuff you get five of each to start off with now if you've watched the previous episode you'll know that that's your satellites and stuff like that oh you are close to me um, so you'll know what they are on the map obviously this is how you deploy them actually in your ship rather than on the map you can get up, uh, if you get up at any time, your ship will remain where it is. It will also remain at relative speed as well. Uh, if you've got flight assist on, it will obviously naturally slow down. If you set it to slow down, if you've not got the aim assist, uh, sorry, flight assist on, it will continue going until the end of time or until you burn up one or the other. Okay, right. You got your ship information, which tells you everything about your ship, which also takes you to the map. There we go. You've got docking permission, so if you're near a station, you can get the docking permission. And you've got modes. You've got travel mode, scan mode, and long range scan mode. Now, there is a fourth mode, which um, we don't have. It's a setter mode, which is basically, it speeds up the time, but you need a setter drive for that. We don't have that, so we're not going to worry about that. We're going to get onto the modes in a minute. And you can see the uh, short keys are there as well, which is basically a shift one, two, three, and four for the fourth one. You can also manually remove the flight assist if you wish to from this menu as well if you had um, yeah, if you had laser turrets on board which generally medium and bigger ships have then that's there as well and if you've got a course plotted in you can also activate your autopilot from here you can also set it from shift and a but as you can see we've got no autopilot okay right let's head on out of the station and get out of the way so I'm going to use my mouse scroll to speed up and then our uh, tab button gives us a boost now get on out go oh, oh, what's this here you can see it's pretty responsive for a little ship you notice smaller ships are very responsive and you can see the difference between the steering mode here and if I activate my direct steering 
Oh, that's my map button. Get that off. Thank you. You'll see it's a little clunky for the direct steer. But it is useful if you want to, rather than trying to aim, uh, say you're in combat and you want to, like, you know, be able to shoot directly ahead of you and not worry about where you're aiming and you want to control where the ship goes. So, say you want to, you know, travel up, but your target's roaming to the right to left or whatever, you can obviously use that and fire like that. It does have its uses, but uh, I'm not a big fan of it. Okay. A couple of things to note now that it's appeared on my screen. You have two blue bars, uh, sorry, two bars here. You've got your hull and you've got your shields. If you boost, you actually use shields to boost. Just bear that in mind if you're going into combat. Boost is a good way of getting yourself up to speed as well for travel mode. And we'll get on to travel mode in a minute. It'll also, if you're set to zero meters a second and you boost, it brings you back down to 180 meters a second, which is obviously our go speed for this ship. You also notice you've got a couple of other things. You've got your radar here. And all the icons you see on the map, all these map icons, you will also see on the radar. But you'll also see different things on there. For example, this little lockbox. Because, and there's that ship that was passing us there. You see it there? That's that ship there. So this does give you a lot more information. Because uh, it's used, obviously, more close range. You've got animations that'll pop up here, and any kind of information about ships will pop up here. Let's target a ship now, just so you can see what that looks like. Or is that a ship? Vanguard. There you go. You notice everything's got question marks, question marks, question marks, question marks. This is for stations and for ships. All we need to do is head on up to it. There we go. And we get a relatively close range. I actually think he may be slightly faster than we are. But what we could do to catch up to him is if we use travel mode, which is shift and one. Travel mode will charge and activate. You see, we are much, much quicker now. Now, the downside is, is we're going to pass by him. He may actually already, yeah, he's already engaged travel mode. So let's go ahead and pick something a little Vanguard. bit slower. Vanguard. Here we go. Let's head on over to it now. Using our no travel mode. And then if we press backspace, all stop. Let's just see if he's traveling faster than we can keep up with him. Yeah, he's still traveling faster than we can keep up. Let's find one. Velas, Vanguard. Okay, we're getting closer to him, so that'll do. Right, another thing I want to point out as well is if you press your Shift and X, you'll actually match the speed of the target you have. So he stopped, so we know. Vanguard. He's traveling at 68, 69, yeah, there you go. The match speed is Shift and X if you ever need to use it. Useful yeah, to have if you're like following like what something that you want to follow at close range or you want to keep it at the same range while you're shooting it with, certainly with turrets and stuff like that, so it's worthwhile. Okay, let's close this gap. Travel mode again. You'll also notice that the screen uh, where, the wing, where the windows are are highlighted slightly like a, an orangey brown color. That's your indication that you're in travel mode. I'll fire off now. Okay, let's all stop just out of range. Go. There we go. All stop. We'll match the target speed. Now, shift and two is our scan mode. And if we get close enough, we should be able to scan our target. So let's just increase our speed so we're a little closer. There you go, we scanned it. It's got storage. Can't, we haven't got any other information on it. It looks like that's about as much as we're going to get. Now, if you got better scanners, you'd obviously do one it quicker, and two, you'd probably get more information as well. Okay, right, so... Let's just let him break away. That was Tom's channel open. Oh. No, we don't want to talk to you, sorry. Goodbye. That's the X button that I pressed accidentally. That C button, Tom's sorry. Channel open. Goodbye. Get rid of them. Right, another thing I want to point out while we're here actually is if you notice here, this here. This is that ship's shield generator. You notice it's got two. You can individually target modules. 
on a ship. So if you wanted to, you could take on these shield generators, and then he'd have no shields, or she'd have no shields, it's a female pilot. And um, so you can take take the shield generator down and rend, you know basically render the shields inoperable. Uh, good for useful you know useful for boarding parties and stuff like that. When you get to larger ships, you you do get to see a few things that you can do that you wouldn't normally do with the smaller ships, and certainly you can acquire bigger ships as well that way. Uh, bear in mind, everything has an effect on your reputation, so don't go around shooting stuff that you don't want to uh, upset. Just move on away here. Right, so we're still in scan mode, which is the kind of purpley colour around our hood. This one is our long range scan mode, which you see there in the left hand side. Scan mode avoided, long range scan mode activated. You see there, I've put out a ping. If you hold the R button, there's this charging sound. You can overcharge. Which means it doesn't do anything like you can hear there. But if you just go one or two seconds, it sends out a directional pulse. Go. Now, in effect, when you set a ship to explore, this is basically what they're doing. They're going to a point and they're scanning all four directions. You'll notice now on our map we've got question marks on those stations. We've also got lock boxes. And any other information that we may have, you know, any other stations that we have in range from our scans, we'd find that. That's the only ones we've got. That's the three modes, and obviously number four would be the setter mode, but we don't have a setter drive. So absolutely useless to us. Right, let's stop our engines. Okay, so that's the layout of the ship. Um, I don't want to go into any more detail about it. Um, there is a couple of other things we can do with combat and stuff like that, but we'll target that when we come to combat. Our next episode, we're going to start looking again in a wingman, um, or at least a fleet going. I want to try and get a couple of ships going, but for that we need money. So I'm going to show you a good way of making money very quickly without doing anything whatsoever. Now, from this point here, you can choose to continue doing the storyline, which is basically unlocking yourself for HQ with uh, research and stuff like that. And it gives you the storyline. Or you can set yourself up to not fail. And the reason why I said that is because when you start doing the mission, you'll have enemies come and intercept you and they'll just blow your ship up. This ship is not built for combat. You know it's got a little cannon on it, it's useless. But it is good to make us some money real fast, where we can buy some better ships, and we can use this ship here to unlock our main storyline. If you'd like to jump ahead and see how that main storyline is done, then feel free to check out the older guy because the same storyline follows. Except the money side of things is a bit 50-50 because um, the economy is up and down. So in this case, I'm going to set you something up that is absolutely foolproof. Um, where you can earn enough money to buy any ship you want at this rate right now. So you could, if you really want to, grind out and get yourself a capital ship straight off the bat. But it'll take you a little bit longer and it's a little bit laborious. There's an easier way to get capital ships in terms of your productivity and your time. That's going to be us for this episode. Let me know in the comments section if you're struggling with anything whatsoever. If you do like to get more direct information, then make sure you check out the uh, Discord below. Um, otherwise, leave me a comment and I'll try and get back to you with anything that you want. Until next time, everybody, take care for now. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.